transfer. Uh, Marcus Fleming is one of the guys that's really jumped out. Been really pleased with Daywan McDougal, a kid that played a bunch for us uh, late in the year last year. Uh, having Chig back, you know, I'm excited to see this. It's just great to get the Turp fans back here in the shell, though. Absolutely. Now, Coach, this is an exciting gear. You have the 18th ranked recruiting class in the nation, fourth in the Big Ten. What does that say about the culture that you're rebuilding here? Well, I think it says that we've gone all in to, to, to make Maryland football relevant. Uh, we're selling what we think is a culture and, and a program that's an up and coming. We feel like the best is ahead for us. We're moving into a brand new $200 million facility. We've got great players that have really bought into everything we're selling about being here in the DMV community. Exciting times for Maryland. And coach, I heard that the winner gets a steak dinner. Does that extend to your media friends? It extends to the media friends. Pick a team, red or white. There, Do it now. There we go. Howard, Kevin, did you hear that it extends to the media team? So I'm going to hold coach Loxley to that. I just did you guys a real big solid right there. No doubt you did is Marcus Fleming, a guy that coach just talked about on the return and the transfer from Nebraska with an outstanding start for the red team, takes it into white team territory. One of the things that's always difficult is special teams, whether you want to go live in, in practice, and you don't get an opportunity to do a lot of that, but this really shows the ability to, to really be able to set the tone for the red team today. Now Marcus Fleming, Day-Day McDougal, two guys that coach talked about just a moment ago are on this red team as some of the young guys that are going to make an impact. Now the red team is for the most part and I don't want to say completely because you never know what's going to shake out Howard but this is mainly the second team offense going against more or less a first team defensive unit for the white team and we'll see how they how they fare here today. Let's get a good look at Greg Rose and there's a good look at Devin King. This white team defense going against Eric Nigerian and David Faust. The two quarterbacks and Faust will get the nod today for the red team. So much has to be done in a pre-snap read look to get an opportunity to see where the ball needs to go or whether you want to make a run call here as a quarterback. Now you'll notice in the spring game, the ball's going to be set at the 30-yard line. So regardless of the return for Marcus Fleming, they get two yards on the first down carry. And there's a good look at David Faust. Didn't see any action last year. The native of Edgewater, Maryland, out of South River High School, threw for 2,781 yards and 34 touchdowns in his high school career. Second down and eight. It's McDougal in motion. And instead, the handoff right up the middle. And a pickup of about four. And that's Challen Fa'amatu, the senior from Hawaii, who really jumped up this spring, according to Dan Enos, as part of a running back core that was a little thin during the spring. And that becomes an issue, but when you can find some guys that are able to step up and be able to carry the rock, that's going to be big for this team because you just don't want to be just about passing. You want to be able to control that line of scrimmage, being able to run the ball, getting yourself to second and short sometimes. On third down, Faust to the air, and that one almost intercepted. Terrific anticipation from Devin King, who jumped the route, swatted it down. It's fourth down. Really did a nice job of sitting there. Now he watches the receiver the whole time, gives King an opportunity to jump on the ball. So you want to be disciplined as far as your eyes are concerned. But that is a great break on the ball to come up with the defensive deflection there. Anthony Pecorella to punt it away. And Rakim Jarrett, the deep man for the white team. And there are no returns. It is a fair catch only on punts. And you saw the returns are going to be allowed on kickoffs, but it's not going to matter because it's going to go to the 30-yard line. There's the rest of the game format. 15-minute quarters, clock continues to run. Regular football scoring, and as Crystal mentioned, the, the big key, the winners get a steak dinner. The losers, as Michael Loxley told us, <laughs> beans and weenies. So everybody's eating, but only one of them's getting the steak dinner as Kaulia Tungavailoa takes the field. Four games last year, good enough to get honorable mention all Big Ten. Third in the Big Ten in passing yards per game. Fourth in completion percentage. And the only scholarship quarterback on the roster this spring, Tunga Vailoa, ready to go to work from the 15-yard line. 
quarterbacks in the yellow jerseys, so they'll be touched up. And that'll put them down as that's thrown away by Tunga Bailoa. And it's second down. Well, I think one of the things that happens, is you don't want to tackle your quarterbacks. They want to get out of here healthy as from the quarterback position, so you heard the word, you know, want to touch them up. You don't want to tackle them to the ground, but you definitely want them to know that they have been tackled. So for a defensive player, make sure you get in front, but don't take the quarterback to the ground. There are some positions that coaches are looking at. We'll get through that during the course of this broadcast, but one position that is locked up is the quarterback position. Tunga Vailoa is going to be the starting quarterback when this Maryland team opens up against West Virginia. Tunga Vailoa completes it to Tayon Fleet Davis and the tackle made by Deontay Banks. I think one of the things you want to keep an eye on, yeah, keep an eye on the footwork. That's one of the things they wanted to clean up uh, here and really allow him to be able to maneuver in the pocket. But they're going to throw the ball a lot, so you're going to see his footwork and just see how, how bad has progressed from last year. One of the big things Dan Eno's told us when we talked with him yesterday, that was what they worked on, details, fundamentals, pressure up the middle, and he's sacked. Good push up front by that defensive line. This Maryland defense is going to be an interesting defense this year, Howard. They had some room to grow, but this defensive line getting a good push. As you talked about a full rush, getting your hands inside on the offensive tackle allowed that, that play to be made, and that's outstanding, being able to get upfield pressure in the face of the quarterback really disruptive and that's what they're looking for to find those defensive linemen that they can rotate through that can create pressure on the quarterback and put them in the long yarded situations yeah one of the big questions that brian stewart had entering this spring game is let's see that defensive rotation can i feel confident about putting the second line in he likes the front guys are there going to be guys developing behind them that's one of the things they'll look for today an excellent punt and it's fair caught off the bounce. Everything is fair caught on punts today. And a second opportunity now for the red offense. And as you're seeing, this is so much of a game atmosphere. Yes, it's a spring game, but sometimes when you watch these games, you'll see the uh, coaches and coordinators out on the field calling plays. But this is a situation where they're using the headset. They want the quarterbacks to be able to communicate with the players on the field. So the coaches are on the sideline being able to signal those plays in and get them called and, and see how these quarterbacks are going to react to the plays that are being called. One for some of these young guys, this is the first college moment they've had in front of any amount of fans in the stands as Faust over the middle, able to connect with Justin Brown and Brown with the first down. You know, last year with the pandemic, nobody was in the stands, only conference games played, and for the first time in the young career of some of these Maryland players, and this is a young team, they look up and there's there's people there. It's not just mom, dad, and your sister, it's a whole lot of people that are here, relatively speaking, watching you play in the spring game. On the receiving. Illegal here downfield. On the Number 86. Player was covered. Five yards only. Repeat first down. That's Malik Jackson, the tight end, who was downfield. Let's go down to Crystal for more on the fans in the stands. Yeah, guys, there are 5,000 fans in attendance here today. That's only about 10% of what this stadium can hold. But as the kids would say, it is definitely a vibe. You have the band out here, the cheerleaders, and the dance squad. So a lot of energy here from the fans on the sidelines. And as you guys mentioned, this might be some of the first time some of these young players are playing in front of fans in their collegiate career. Well, it's just fun to have the band back and the cheerleaders back and a little of the atmosphere that we hope will return in full when we kick things off several months from now in the fall. Carry a moment ago from Isaiah Jacobs, his brother Josh with the Raiders, former Bama running back. Jacobs again with another opportunity. Isaiah Jacobs to the 35-yard line. So we've already seen the red teams come out in, in multiple formations. There they go to tight ends, giving the running back an opportunity to cut back. And this is what they're trying to establish, that offensive line, Kevin, to find the, the five best guys that are going to be able to help them. They feel good at the tight end spot, though, so it's good to see those tight ends out there being, being able to inline block. A 
Almost on third down. With time, finds McDougal. And he's short of the first down by a yard. But another guy that was talked about by Coach Loxley when he was chatting with Crystal earlier is part of a wide receiver core that offensive coordinator Dan Eno says is a chance to be the best core of receivers he's ever been around. And on fourth down, the errant snap. And Faust has to cover it up. Big loss on the play. And a turnover on downs for the red team. Turnover on downs, and you don't want to see that. You want to see him as clean as possible, being able to get the quarterback exchange uh, really well, but obviously a high stat, uh, snap. And that's what happens when the center gets a, a nose tackle over the top of him. He wants to get rid of the ball so he can get those hands up, but it didn't work out well there. It's something he needs to slow down on and continue to work with. So back to work goes Tonga Vailoa and the white team. start an excellent field position inside the 25 of the red team. Remember, there are stakes up for grabs in this game. S-T-E-A-K-S <laughs> for the winner. Stakes and then beans and weenies for the losing team. Something to play for in this spring game. Got Tim Jarrett in motion. Instead, the give is to the running back, Fleet Davis, and making the play is Ruben Hippolyte, part of a linebacking core that's really, Howard, one of the deepest positions on this team, despite losing Chance Campbell, their leading tackler from a year ago, and Ayinde Ile, who both transferred Campbell to Ole Miss and Ile to Georgia Tech. Yeah, I really like the Hippolyte being able to read that play and, and get upfield in play action. Vailoa off that play action and finds his tight end, Chig Okonkwo. And great to see Okonkwo back out on the field after missing last year with myocarditis. Stayed out for his heart to heal. He is back. And as Mike Loxley said, the tight end position is back in focus now with his return. Tonga Vailoa doing a nice job on the previous play, coming back with hurry up, tried to run the ball, and again, they're really doing a good job up front, the red team is, of, of being able to try to reset the line of scrimmage, making it tough for them to be able to run the ball. Second and goal from the 11. Teon Fleet Davis motioning into the backfield. Vilo will swing it to his running back and dancing out of bounds to the eight-yard line. It'll bring up third and goal. To me, that was a really well-designed play. You got your offensive line you're getting out front, trying to lead. You know, you're trying to take advantage of the rush coming up front, so you want to get the ball out to Fleet Davis as quickly as possible. But the defense did a great job of keeping that play uh, in bounds and keeping it in front of them. Vailoa, three for four for 26 yards in the early going. Third down and goal. Tonga Vailoa to the end zone, batted down, and that's Devin Dickerson who makes the play in that Maryland secondary. Brian Stewart said, who's going to be our fourth and fifth corner? Still Banks and Jacorian Bennett are the top three. Maybe this moves a guy into a top four or five slot. It does. Gives you that opportunity, right? He does a great job of getting the right hand in there, not holding with the left to try to gain an advantage. But when you go back to the pre-snap of that play, you saw the linebackers up in the A-gap giving that blitz look, but then they dropped off and played zone, and Dickerson was able to make an outstanding play. Joseph Petrino, four for seven. In the field goal department a year ago will line this one up. To try to get the white team on the board. The 24-yard try with no rush is good. And a 3-0 lead for the white team. 5.05 remaining in the first quarter. So taking advantage of that turnover on the high snap over the head of quarterback David Faust. And the white team held to the field goal try, a 3-0 lead for the White as we check back in with Krista. Hey guys, I'm joined right now by redshirt junior wide receiver Joshua Jones. 
Joshua, thank you so much for being here today. You have provided this offense with such a spark in your freshman year from that three touchdown game. I know you remember it. To your redshirt sophomore year, what are you expecting out of yourself in 2021? Um, just to build off of that year, really, just that's it, to build and get better and, and work on the things that I feel like I could have did better then and, and, and kind of get those better for now. Okay, and for the fans who don't know, tell them why you're not playing today in the spring game. I'm a little nicked up, and I wasn't 100, and they didn't want me to go out there if I wasn't 100. So. And how are you feeling now? Uh, I'm, I'm feeling all right. I, I, I want to go, though. I, I hate I hate watching. I, I wish I was out there with them. Yeah, I can only imagine. Now, you've been here for spring football. Who do you think on either side of the ball will give opposing teams problem come regular season for you guys? Uh, Fanage Gote on defense and uh, Dante Demas on offense. Demas, yeah, he's said to have a big one. Um, who are you picking today? You got the red team or the white team? I'm with the white team. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah, Joshua, thank that. you so much for your time. Right, thank you. No question. He's already picked his side. He knows what team he's on, and he knows who he's battling for, at least in spirit. Guy, and that was one of the things Michael Loxley talked about with us yesterday, Howard. That's no different for any team in the spring. If you're at all dinged up and you're established like, like Jones is, you're not going to be out there in these spring games. You don't want to risk further injury. No, you don't need that. You want to get your team as, as healthy as possible to get through this 15 practices and culmination of this game. So it's about making sure that the guys that are 100% can go out and compete, but those that are not and have already proven themselves can kind of sit back and watch. Marcus Fleming in motion, and on first down, Faust gives it off. Good run over the left side for Fahamatu. And there's a list of who isn't playing today, and a lot of those names are going to be names you see and hear a lot in the fall. Jaquari and Bennett, one of those. And we were excited to see Terrence Lewis when this season started. The freshman, who's the third highest ranked signee in program history, is out with an ACL injury. They hope he'll be back in time for the fall, but that's a young linebacker that there's a lot of expectation for around this Maryland program. Truly no question, a lot of leadership there. Here's the chop block. With that chop block, once the, one of the defensive players is engaged with the offensive player, uh, you cannot come in and then take, uh, cut him off at the below the waist. That is called the chop block, and, and that's really much more for precautionary and safety reasons that you don't want to uh, put a player uh, in that type of situation. First to 25, Faust behind the intended receiver. That's C.J. Dupree, one of the early enrollees at a suddenly deep tight end position with the return of Chig Okonkwo. Corey Deitches has had a tremendous spring. You've got two early enrollees, Weston Wolf and the young man in C.J. Dupree, and we saw Malik Jackson earlier at the tight end spot. And that's a spot that Michael Loxley and Dan Enos really want to utilize, but they didn't have a true tight end on the roster last year, Howard. And obviously, if you don't have a true tight end, you're not able to use that position very well. Yeah, you're not able to use them, but here you see another great job of cutback run there. You talk about an offensive line and being able to use those two wide receivers to be able to, to really set and give yourself an advantage in the run game. Montau with the run there, now third down. A total staff revamp this year for Maryland. Four new coaches, five holdovers who have different responsibilities. Dan Enos, the offensive coordinator. Brian Stewart, the defensive coordinator. Ron Zook, elevated from senior analyst. He's now in charge of special teams, and he's associate head coach. A little juggling catches made by McDougal. McDougal motoring up the sideline just short of the first down. Pulled down from behind by Corey Coley, Jr be interested in the spring game and you want to go for it here again putting your players in the different situations to try to find out exactly how they're going to react be interesting to see they defensively kept everything in front of them was still were able to give up too much yardage going across but it looks like they're going to punt it here red team is head coached by brian stewart dan enos is the head coach of the white team 
Seen Michael Loxley just sort of roaming around as the prerogative of a head coach in a spring game. And all punts will be fair caught. This one at the 13-yard line. Tomorrow, a softball doubleheader begins with Northwestern against Michigan. Then Wisconsin slugs it out with Nebraska. Coverage starts tomorrow at noon Eastern on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. To work comes the white team with the 3-0 lead. Tunga Vailoa. Back out there again. You will see him most of the day. He is the only quarterback on this white roster and the only scholarship quarterback on the Maryland roster. As Corey Deitches goes in motion. And on first down, a little play action. And Rakim Jarrett. Trying to make some plays in open space, and Jarrett stopped at the 19-yard line. A pickup of about six on first down for the white team. Second and four, back to the air once more. And this time it's Deitches. And Corey Deitches making a nice move. That's a tight end in space. The Y position, six foot one, 220 pound sophomore who has had a tremendous spring, according to Dan Enos. Yeah, Tonga Vailoa getting the ball out quickly to the wide open tight end there. And then, hey, got to have something at the end where he's just not going to run and get tackled, getting the ball upfield, being aggressive. On first down, off play action. Tonga Vailoa over the middle, complete again. This to rock him. Jared, or rather, Brian Cobbs makes the catch there for Maryland. And the footwork is something they really stressed with Tonga Vailoa in the spring. Really did a nice job staying really compact, not overstriding, understanding where the ball needs to go. And those are some of the things that they wanted to clean up with his game. You know how athletic he is. But allowing him to operate inside the pocket is going to be important for him this year. Dayon Fleet Davis picks his way forward for the first down, and that will take us to the end of the first quarter of the Maryland Spring Game. A 3-0 lead for the White, and a little momentum perhaps building for the quarterback, Taulia Tunga-Vailoa. Guys, we'll send it back to you. He mentioned Dante Dimas, who we uh, all saw that beautiful 100 grab in the first half. We'll see if he can do something similar in the second. Dante Dimas had the best practice of the spring that he's had on Thursday, according to his head coach, Dan Enos. And he told us, Howard, that he's got a chance to be special. One of the reasons, because he can go out and win one-on-ones against some of the best corners in the league. And that's going to be important. And you heard Coach Lashley talk about those 50-50 balls, giving a guy with, with his type of measurements a chance to go up and get the ball is going to be important for them to be able to do and see if they'll make some adjustments uh, in the second half of this game. Tonga Vailoa to the air on first down, finds Rakim Jarrett, fourth catch for Jarrett on the afternoon. Jared did a good job of setting up his blocks again in a short pass, and then it's incumbent upon those receivers to try to make something happen. Guys are blocking downfield. You love to see that in a game like this. From the 41 yard line, after the 11 yard completion of first down. And the toss to Deitches. Banging on one tackler, trying to fight his way for extra yardage. The ball comes out at the 49-yard line. Who's got it? In the middle of that pile, it'll belong to the red team. Deitch just coughs it up, and a turnover. The red team able to scoop it up. And a miscue for the white gives the red some life early third quarter. Really, we've been able to see this defense staying up front, being physical. Going after the football, secure the tackle. Now he goes right to it and takes it away. That was Jordan Mosley who got the rip. Tarheeb still 
with the recovery. Mosley with the strip, still with the recovery, and there's an injured player, and that's the last thing any of us ever want to say during one of these spring games, and it's David Brownlee, one of the members of this deep linebacking core that is still down on the field for the red team. You hate to see this for the senior from Forestville, Maryland, David Brownlee. Three tackles and four games played last year. There's a look at Brownlee. We'll see if we can see what happened here. They're looking at his right leg. He is up right now. As he twisted around, he grabbed that right knee as he rolled against the helmet of Rakim Jarrett. So many times when you have a pass play like this, you want the receivers to get out front and be able to cut your... Uh, the defenders down, but you also have to be, you know, cognizant of these are your teammates out here. So if you can stay up, try to stay up. But it, it's tough because you're doing exactly what the coaching staff wants you to do, and you're trying to make plays out here. But you want to be able to stay up and keep everybody healthy. So on first down, Eric Nigerian is the quarterback for the red team now, and Nigerian with the handoff to Fa Matau. Takes it from the 49 down near the 46-yard line. Pick up a three. I really like the way he runs the football. Not a lot of wiggle, but gets that foot in the ground and gets north, getting positive yardage. Tough to bring down when he gets those shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. Now David Faust back out there. Nigerian had the first snap. Faust off play action on the second. That's tipped at the line, and the pass incomplete. And it brings up third down. Faust today, four of seven for 27 yards for the white team. Third down and five. Faust has been mainly the guy for this red team. Third down and five. That one knocked away. Intended for Carlos Carrier, but a good defensive play by a guy whose name we've called several times since Brian Stewart said he should still be at his prom. That's Corey Coley Jr. <laughs> well, he does a nice job of getting the hands in there, sitting on the zone route, uh, really contested. Going to have an opportunity to contribute to this football team. As mentioned earlier, they're looking they need to find out who's going to be that the fourth, fifth, sixth uh, defensive back. To that's going to be important to find a guy that you can count on. Those two outside spots are solidified, but if you can have a young guy step in and be able to become that nickel because so much now you're seeing so many multiple fronts from offenses that you have to be able to line up. And a miscue in the punt game, and it's recovered by the Red. A muffed punt, and the Red's going to have it first and goal inside the 10-yard line, recovered by, the, by Devin Dickerson. Yeah, he takes his eyes off. As the ball was mopped by the receiver, by the kicking team. He's calling for the fair catch, but takes his eyes off the football. Doesn't keep him square, and it's tough, man. This is tough duty, whether you have teams covering or not. Winds are swirling, but you got to be able to secure the catch. This is something that Coach Loxley won't be happy about it because, once again, it's an unforced error. And this kind of is just like a penalty. You've got to be able to know and take care of the football and not not put your team in a tough situation, which, which he's done here. That was one of the things he talked about with Crystal as we got this second half started, those unforced errors. He was talking penalties, but now a turnover. And on first down, Faust jumps the pass to Justin Brown, and it'll bring up second down and goal for the red team. from Hillsboro, New Jersey will leave the field for the moment for the Red on second and goal from the five-yard line. Faust, backside pressure comes. Did he get touched up before he got rid of the football? The pass incomplete for Cameron Blunt. It looked like he was touched, which would be a sack. 
not sure they called the touch. It'll bring up third and goal at the five. And in the red zone, of course, they're going to let it go. But the defensive guys are going to be upset about it because that was clearly going to be a sack coming off the edge. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Brandon Jennings was robbed there, Howard Griffith. <laughs> he had a sack. The freshman from Jacksonville has a sack, but it's not going to count. Play clock runs out. They'll ignore that as well on third and goal. The host on the roll, throwing on the run, and has to throw it away. Nobody there. Intended receiver was Carlos Carrier, but he was out of the back of the end zone anyway. You saw the hat come down, and it's fourth down and goal. I think both defenses have done a really good job once you got down into the red zone. Now, they've been helped by some penalties, but the fact is they, they've still been able to hold up as far as the coverage is a concern and keeping things in front of them. They haven't made it easy on the quarterbacks, but we also should keep in mind, Kevin, that the quarterbacks aren't going to be running in this type of situation. So that's one less uh, situation that the defense has to be concerned about. And in a regular game, these quarterbacks could be on the move, so they have to also be cautious of that. Yeah, we'd certainly see more running from Tonga Vailoa in a regular season game. And one of the things Dan Eno said about his young quarterback was he was a good runner in high school and he recruited Tonga Vailoa to Alabama when he was at Bama. And then Taulia ended up at Alabama with his brother. And he said he was a good runner in high school, but he's a better runner than I gave him credit for at this point. And that's a big aspect of his game that we'll see come the fall starting September 4th against West Virginia. It absolutely will. And there will also become a time where from a from a coaching standpoint, you don't want to continue to run him. You know the type of skills that he has there, but you don't want to put him in harm's way because you're going to need a guy like that down the stretch. Anthony Pecorella with the field goal. That is good. And the red on the board, a 9-3 ball game. White with the lead, 8.26 to play in the third. Spring football on the Big Ten Network is presented by Marathon, driven forward. A 9-3 lead for the white as we check back in with Crystal Rich. Yeah, guys, you were talking about to a, you were talking about Talia Tungavailo. I uh, almost said his brother's name to a. You know, something that Dan Enos also said is his his legs are really good, but he wants to start teaching Tungavailo how to beat players with his arm as well as his mind. He said the running after that that's just a bonus, guys. Well, quite a bonus it is because he is a skilled runner. But you see what he's been able to do with his arm today, 22 of 30 for 227 yards. And Howard, that goes also in hand with what you were talking about earlier, how Dan Enos has really stressed footwork, eyes, posture, really all the fundamentals at the quarterback position with Talia during the spring. Yeah, playing the quarterback position all really starts you know, at your feet. And people think about it uh, above the waist and being able to throw it, but it starts down there with the fundamentals and having a good stance, being able to deliver the ball at different angles. And he's shown us some of that today. Although he's missed in some situations where he uh, should have put up 50-50 balls, he's, you still have seen a lot of the growth in him as a quarterback. And in a game like this where he's forced to, to be that passer, this puts him in a good situation as far as coaching, that being able to coach the tape because he's going to be able to get a lot of reps and understand what he needs to do as far as his mechanics are concerned to continue to get better. 20 for 28 in the first half. He had 10.3 yards per catch in that first half. And 11 of his mid-range passes were completed. So a very good job working in that middle 10 to 19 yard range for Tonga Vailoa in the first half. Back to work here with 8.26 to go in the third from the 30-yard line on first down. Fakes the toss play, buys some time, and the check down to Teon Fleet Davis. He'll pick up four to the 34-yard line. 
This also forces him to be disciplined. And again, I mentioned earlier about taking care of the football and not putting it in his harm's way, not forcing it down the field because he's not getting a lot of looks, a lot of cover two looks today where they want to keep things in front of him. So he's forced to read uh, deep routes and then come back and take the check downs. Well, one of the mantras that Dan Eno said to us, and you'll hear it all year long with this Maryland team, be aggressive, but not careless. One of the things he's stressed with Taulia since he arrived back in Maryland with this quarterback, be aggressive, but not careless. We don't take his creativity away, Dan Eno said, but we don't want him to be careless and sloppy with the ball. And that's important. You know, you, you've got to be able to have as, as many opportunities offensively as you can and you don't want to short yourself there and taking care of the football Third gives you that four. opportunity on the Viloa, that one caught and then dropped it slipped out of the hands of Okonkwo Chig Okonkwo with a catch and a fumble and it's recovered by Jordan Mosley for the red team Mosley, once again, one of the things that we've seen, this secondary on both sides of the ball, is doing a great, a great job of being aggressive after the catch. Boy, on the field's a completed catch. Recovered, and a fumble recovered by the defense. First down, red. Three turnovers now for the white team. White leads at 9-3, but the red with the bat with the with the ball back as we go back down to Crystal. Guys, I'm joined by defensive back Jacorian Bennett. Jacorian, you've had some standout moments last year. How key do you believe your role will be this year in the secondary? Oh, I feel like uh, right this year I just have to step up and be a leader. You know, uh just uh Coach Lots put me on the leadership council this year and it's just you know, it was kind of a humbling experience just to see that he sees all the hard work I'm putting in and just, you know, just the time I, you know, just just how I feel with the group of guys, you know, just the, the brotherhood we build. And, you know, I feel like it's going to be a special year this year. Now, I hate to do this to you, but I heard that growing up you used to impersonate Terrell Owens. I mean, do you have any impression? Oh, do, you, do you do? We're going to pause right here to see the score. Give us one second. Well, and what a play. Nick DeGennaro with the touchdown grab. A little razzle-dazzle for the red team. And a chance to grab the lead with 631 remaining in the third with a successful extra point of the celebration as the toss play to Fahamatau. And then he's able to fire with pressure to a wide open DeGennaro for the score. Defensive players getting a little nosy in the backfield. Got to be able to stay with your man. But you see the excitement uh, that his teammates have for him going out and making a big play in the spring game. And now Pecorella with the extra point. It is good. And the red team with a flag down. The red team with the lead. 631 to play in the third. Again, the winner, the winning team gets steak dinner. The losing team There's will no eat beans and weenies. Well, now it's and no flag, 10-9 lead for the red, taking advantage of the white turnover as we go back down to Crystal. Now, Jacorian, before the touchdown, I was joking with you because I heard when you were younger, you used to pretend to be Terrell Owens. Now, I just needed to know, do you do any T.O. impressions? Do you do sit-ups in the driveway? What are we talking about? Uh, when I was younger, like, my first football jersey was a, a, a T.O. jersey. So, you know, I always wanted to play wide receiver and just... Me and my dad, I put my jersey on. Me and my dad, we just go outside. He just throw the ball to me, you know. And I do the little T.O. thing that he always do when he used to score. So, you know, that was a very cool moment, yeah. But here you are, defensive back, going to be an important key in the secondary. If you could describe this defense so far of what you've seen in spring ball, what would you say about them? Um, honestly, to keep it simple, we're just a fast, physical, and just a humble defense, you know. And we're just going to be confident and just go out there and do what we got to do. No, I'm interested to know what it's like for you playing under Brian Stewart, who is coming back here as the defensive coordinator. What's what's the experience been like so far in spring ball? Oh, Coach Stewart, I love Coach Stewart. They and I have a special relationship. He just brings that energy. Like I haven't seen that energy from a coach in a while, and it's just it's like he wants to be out there with us, but you know. <laughs> He can't be out there, but uh, he's past yeah, his prime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love this dude. Jacorian, thank you so much. Best of luck this season to right, you. Thank you, too. Guys. 
Well, Ja'Korian Bennett will be part of that secondary for sure, Howard, because as Brian Stewart told us, those top three positions are pretty much set. Deontay Banks, Tarheeb still, and Ja'Korian Bennett. They're looking for fourth, fifth, and sixth guys in that defensive backfield, all of whom will play a big role this year, but those top three spots solidified going into the fall. And you can see that there's a lot of trust in the new coach and defensive coordinator, Stewart. He's already made a connection with several of the players, obviously, on this defense. So that's going to be key because if players buy into what you're trying to teach them, uh, you're going to have some success. Pick up of two for Tayon Fleet Davis, the red with the lead, thanks to this marathon scoring drive of two plays, 45 yards. De Janeiro with the 41 yard touchdown catch from Bob Matau. And, well, the red now with the lead, despite the fact they've trailed the entire day, but that red defense getting stops in the red zone gave the offense an opportunity to come back and take the lead. And now it's up to Tunga Vailoa and this white offense to see if they can make some plays. On second and eight, fakes the swing, a flag is down, and Tunga Vailoa will run. He's touched up at the 33-yard line. In the regular season, that has the potential to be a much bigger play than when you're wearing a gold jersey in the spring. The offsides will make it second and three for the white team. So again, Kevin, you're seeing the growth of the quarterback, continuing to understand what's going on around him. Wanted to have that quick throw out to the left. It was not there, well defended. And then he's going to pull it down and try to make plays with his legs. And you're right, that's that can be a huge play for them as they move forward in this season. On second and three, back to the air, leaping up to make the catch is Tayon Fleet Davis. And that running back core was thin this spring with injuries, but boy, you look at what Tayon Fleet Davis brings as a receiver out of the backfield. That's an emerging weapon for this Maryland offense come the fall. And what's a little scary about it is they're bringing them from the backfield and making some of these plays. They're going to have the opportunity once the season, I think, as they continue to progress, to line him up in a slot position, motion him out of the backfield, and really be able to get a read on what defenses are trying to do. First down and 10, quick toss on the slant. Catch is made near midfield, and going down to get that one is Rakim Jarrett. Red team wanted to bring some pressure up the middle. Wasn't able to get there. Nice job of picking up the blitz. Again, understanding where pressure is, right? Where it's coming from? Where's my hot read? Where does the ball need to go? Tungo Vailoa has done a great job today at really being able to recognize some of that. Second and three. Good protection. Tungavailoa throws on the run, and the juggling catch made on the sidelines by Dante Demas. That's a little bit of chemistry there, Howard, between quarterback and receiver. He needed somebody to come get the ball, and Demas, the veteran, knew exactly where to go to get that football and get the first down. Really big time. And watch Tungavailoa on the move. His accuracy would be is running getting outside of the pocket is one of the best in this conference so he's going to be a problem for a lot of defenses motion across from jones tongue of Iloa with pressure coming the red team is saying he was touched up Fanage gote got into the backfield and he was saying i touched him that should be a sack like, second down yeah, spoken like a true defensive player they're always going to get there <laughs> Coach, I got there, made the play. Really well done. He did. Really well done. No wonder he was arguing for that sack. Put the ball midfield. I think they're going to call it a sack. And second down. Ngavailoa finds his tight end, Okonkwo, and Okonkwo down at the 41-yard line. Three minutes to play in the third, and for more on Chig Okonkwo, we check back in with Crystal. Hey guys, Chick Okwankwo has had such a return to the game of football. As you guys know, he missed his entire 2020 season as a junior when he was diagnosed with myocarditis. 
which is an inflammation of the heart muscle. Now, he had to take six months off her doctor's orders from March of 2020 all the way to October. He did have a COVID test that came back negative, but doctors believe that that was a false negative. That's very scary for a player who lost his father to a fatal heart attack, but the good news is he's healed up. He's out here playing. He's cleared, and Dan Enos, the offensive coordinator who happens to be the head coach of the white team today, says that he believes he can already be not just a receiving tight end, but a big-time blocking end out there, guys. Well, that's one of the things this offense missed last year was a true tight end. Both Michael Loxley and Dan Enos love the position and really want to utilize it more in this offense. And with some newcomers and the return of Chigo Conquo, they feel that position is in much better shape this fall. Yeah, they're inside the red zone now in a too tight look, but being able to block at the line of scrimmage is a huge part of what he's been able to do. You find the openings. And a quick toss, an opening found there to Brian Cobbs, and it'll be first and goal at the four-yard line. A little hurry up as the white team is trying to regain the lead late in this third quarter. Just mention the six months that Okonkwo had to stay away from the game, he said that, you know what, uh, the, find the silver lining in this. It's the best semester I've ever had in terms of my grades at Maryland. He didn't have anything else to do but yeah. study. Yeah. Vailoa, with pressure coming, throwing for the back corner of the end zone. A flag is down. Rakim Jarrett, the intended receiver. And what if it was offensive pass interference with a pick play, or as the offense would call it, a rub? A little rub. <laughs> and it was Chig Okonkwo, as we talked about him, gets called for the rub. The toughest thing. Kevin in that position is all you really want to do is run up the field and turn around and get your numbers turned to the quarterback so you're not called but as soon as as soon as they see those arms extend oh, they're going to call you every time for that one that will not go on the return to play highlight reel for Chigo Conquo second down back at the 19 yard line 16 yards to go for the first down ball stripped out of the hands of Tonga Vailoa and that's a sack you want to not be on the team <laughs> stay away <laughs> from the quarterback right and, and this is this is always a tough play as a defensive player you're trying to make a play get up the field but you also have to be disciplined you can't get your arm in there and because and, and, that's never a good situation for a quarterback because he's trying to, to finish and I know as a defensive player you're trying to make plays but you got to be able to pull off and, and not reach out there and, and hit your quarterback's arm Montez Rogers credited for the sack. Third down and 23 back at the 26-yard line. Rogers again from the backside with pressure, and he gets rid of it to Demas, and Demas out of bounds at the 15 for the white. Navailoa to the air to the 20-yard line, and Cobbs fights for one extra yard to the 19. What that may have done, Howard, is given them the opportunity to get into field goal range here and grab the lead. Give them an opportunity. Trying to pick up 36 yards is always a tough, <laughs> tough deal as an offense. They may be resetting the clock to 15 minutes. We're not sure. This is this is the fourth quarter of a spring game, so there's always a little bit of um, vague interpretation of clock rules, timing rules, and the way things work. Um, we appear to be flipping sides of the field now. I think they're going to restart the fourth quarter. It's a 10-9 lead for the Red. And the White lining things up for a go-ahead field goal on 4th and 16. So the 
Ball at the 19 yard line. This will be a 36 yard attempt for the lead for Joseph Petrino. And with no rush, Petrino bangs it through and the white has regained the lead now 12 to 10 with 14 minutes to go in the spring game. Nice little kicking competition going on here. Both of these guys have missed, so I'm sure they're going to be feel, feeling really confident about themselves once they get to the two-minute situation. Howard, you could cut the tension with a knife <laughs> in this spring game. 12-10, the white with the lead with 13-43 remaining in the fourth. Now the red team will get a chance. There's a guy who's a familiar face. College football fans, Big Ten fans, Ron Zook, back on the sidelines. He was a senior analyst a year ago, but as part of the wholesale changes that Michael Loxley made on this coaching staff, Ron Zook moves to associate head coach and special teams coordinator. And not a bad move when you put a guy like Ron Zook in charge of your special teams, Howard. That's a that's usually a recipe for improvement in that special teams unit. It definitely is, and uh, he's been after Coach Zook to, to take a bigger role uh, on his coaching staff since he originally came in and agreed to be an analyst. And this is one of Coach Lossley's mentors, really helped him a lot down in, in Florida and also in Maryland coming in and, and helping you know, kind of guide him as a head coach as well. And I think that's important to have a guy like that on the staff. A guy who's been a special teams coordinator both at the college level and the NFL level, was a special teams coordinator at Florida with the Gators, then was special teams coordinator with the Steelers in the late 90s, was the head coach, obviously, of Florida and Illinois, and then after leaving Illinois, was the special teams coordinator for the Green Bay Packers. So when you can bring a guy in with that kind of experience on special teams and give him the opportunity and the reins to, to make some changes and to improve that unit, that's not a bad pickup to have and not a bad shift to make for Maryland football. I think when one of the areas, because we know the type of talent, you only need to look at the recruiting rankings and see the type of talent that they are starting to bring into to Maryland. And where that shows up immediately sometimes is on your special teams, and that's a unit that you need to continue to be able to count on and be able to win with as the season moves forward. I say it, Jacobs, nice move in the line of scrimmage, and Jacobs all the way into white team territory out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Give him 22 on the scamper and a first down for the red. Yep, another defensive player is going to be a little upset. Had the tackle for loss, but they continue to let him play. Jacobs does a good job of keeping the feet moving, but I think he may have been tackled for a loss on that one. First down at the 48 of the white. The Jerry and the quarterback, the give, and fighting for a little extra yardage is Fa Matau. Second down. is David Faust. We've seen Eric Najarian briefly, but mainly Faust for this red team at quarterback. Matau again with the carry. And it'll bring up third down. You see the strength of the lower body. First player is not going to be able to bring him down on contact. Continues to fight for it. Kind of like where this team is going to be shaping up. We talked about it being thin at the running back spot. But seen some guys today go out and make some plays for him. It's going to be tough for defenses to, to try to hone in and, and try to stop this team. Yeah, Tayon Fleet Davis has gotten a lot of the headlines in the spring as one of the returners as the ball is knocked out of the hands of Faust and that'll be a sack. Pressure from the back side this time coming from Deshaun Holt. Holt gets off gets to the quarterback and, and we talked earlier about being able to find those guys that are going to be able to help you this is where it starts to show up in the spring game 
when, when some of the other guys are starting to get in the game, starting to get some reps, and you start to see that you're, you're not as deep as you ultimately want to be in the interior line, and that's where they have to continue to grow. So that's no secret. We, we knew that coming into this, but it's an opportunity for those young guys to be able to develop. Inside the 10-yard line, white team with the lead. Michael Loxley mic'd up for us earlier in the game. You get a stop, we get a we got a ball game. You get a stop, we got a ball game. How about scoring off on defense? Score on defense real quick. Got us a ball game. Got us a ball game. Y'all got to take care of the football. Take care of the football. Take care of the football. That, of course, reminding his team that it was a turnover that led to the touchdown for the red team. White team with the lead. Three turnovers for the white today. Now the football from their own six-yard line. Quick toss in the flat. That's Demas who's got the first down out to the 19-yard line. Give him 12 on the catch and run and a first down for the white. Good start when you backed up, get the ball into your playmaker's hand and allow him to operate on the edge, giving you some more room and start to open up this offense. As far as that's concerned, you're not backed up. We're in a situation where you need to protect the football. Team is seven catches for 79 yards, 334 yards and counting for Tonga Vailoa. Pressure coming with time late and he's able to get rid of it. But the pass incomplete intended for Dewan Ellis. Still does an unbelievable job. Doesn't panic, but he's watching the receiver's eyes, gets that left arm up. Comes up with a big defensive play. Your coach Lashley said Tarheem still is as competitive a kid as you will find. He led the nation last year with two pass breakups per game. Honorable mention all conference pick one of seven. Honorable mention all conference selections for Maryland a year ago. And good swarm after the catch by Ty Felton as we check in with Crystal Rich. Guys, he said, my apologies, guys, last year head coach uh, Mike Loxley said that the lights weren't too bright for Steele. He has a ton of confidence, a short memory, and doesn't really care who he's going against. And guys, you know what? I can't even tell you I'm surprised when this guy is uh, from my hometown of Sicklerville, New Jersey. Well, of course. I mean, there's just there's a certain amount of courage and backbone when you're come from Sicklerville, New Jersey, obviously. Repping the hometown, it's Tarheeb still going to be part of that secondary that they are very confident in those corners for Maryland, at least the top three, and they'll look for more as this fall continues in August and September before that opening date against West Virginia. Yeah, we talked about how talented they are, how talented they are at the wide receiver position, but I have really been impressed by these corners on both sides of the ball competing after the catch, trying to take the football away, really making a lot of plays, being aggressive at the point of attack. And that punt bobbled, a muffed punt loose on the field. The white team's gonna have it at the bottom of this pile. The red team had a chance to get the football back. And a muffed punt Recovered by the white team and it's scooped up underneath by the man who had the sack a moment ago, Deshaun Holt. Got to be able to catch the football. And this is one of the things that happens, right? We understand that in this particular game, there's there's not going to be any tackling as far as on the, on the coverage units. But you have to be able to take care of the football, catch the ball. If you're unsure, let it bounce. Let it bounce and give yourself a chance. But we've seen a couple of turnovers today misjudging the football and Howard there's plenty of things to like if you're that man Michael Loxley but you know one thing that's going to concern him coming out of this are these mistakes if you make these mistakes 
starting September 4th against West Virginia, it's not going to be as forgiving as it, as it is when you're in a spring game and you make these mistakes. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And situational football awareness is part of it as well. Unforced errors, you, you can't afford to do that in this type of game, in any type of game, and, and be successful. Daryl Jones off the reverse and out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Pickup of eight for Jones on the run. Four minutes to go in this fourth quarter. Dwight with the 12-10 lead, trying to protect that lead and protect their steak dinner. Force the red team to eat beans and weenies. Tonga Vailoa to the air once more. It's Demas again, and Demas down at the 19-yard line. His eighth catch of the afternoon. Demas is having an outstanding, outstanding day. Tonga Vailoa just in the pocket, understands what's going on from a secondary standpoint because you know the coverage. The, the coverages in this game have been uh, very plain not trying to do anything to try to trick the quarterbacks and, and also not to give their opponents that will be watching this an opportunity to see what they're working on as well. But still making a lot of plays in this game. Eight catches for 98 yards. Tonga Vailoa lobbing it for the back corner of the end zone and he overshot Daryl Jones. Again, give me your receivers an opportunity to come up and make the plays those are plays that he's going to want to have back and I'm sure he's going to be hard on himself at the, at the end of this game he's going to hear from his coaches but he also knows that he's got to give those guys an opportunity to make those plays you notice the clock has stopped right now under four minutes to go in this fourth quarter we're going back to normal football clock rules so clock will stop on incompletions second down and ten Tonga Vailoa, good protection over the middle and just a little too tall for his tight end, Okonkwo. Nice and clean in the pocket. A little high, but still a play that, that's makeable. But just having opportunities to make plays like that is, is what you've got to be able to take advantage of. Down and 10 at the 18. Tonga Vailoa, pressure comes and he's sacked. Flag is thrown as well. The sack back at the 26-yard line. And that pocket collapsing pushed by Sam Okwanu. hold will be declined. It'll bring up a fourth down. Sam Okwanu, his defensive coordinator, Ryan Stewart, gave us a little scouting report and said he's got great short area punch, Howard, and he plays well with his hands. And we've seen that throughout the day today as part of the real strong defensive front four for this Maryland squad. And that's important for a defensive lineman when you talk about being able to, to utilize your hands and reset them when you're going on a pass rush. Uh, these big, strong guards and tackles once they get their hands on you they like to be able to control you because of the strength that they have but to be able to reset and punch again to get around those big guys gives you a distinct advantage 43 yard field goal try is no good and there is life for the red team in the maryland spring game 254 to go and three timeouts to work with for the red down two late in this spring game this would be a great situation for offensively uh, for the red team, to, for them to come up and make a lot of big plays, understand where the ball is, we're down in distance, getting coached up, make good decisions and make plays. But the first thing they have to stop doing is the penalties. Penalties have been an issue on both sides today, but you don't want to have that when you're working a two-minute style drill, which they're doing at this particular point. 54 to go in the fourth. On first down, David Faust a handoff to Isaiah Jacobs. And Jacobs picks up four to the 30-yard line. Continuing to run 242 and counting in this fourth quarter. Four, 
Second down and six. Faust to the air, juggling catch by Jacobs all the way to midfield. He picks up 20 and a red team first down. Love that play from Jacobs coming out of the backfield. He has a read uh, on that safety. He's got, he's got a cut underneath to go over the top. And he comes up with a big play for the team there. First down, Faust with pressure coming, and that's incomplete. It will stop the clock with 2.13 to go. Howard, you know the running back position much better than I do, having been at that spot in both college and the NFL, but I've been impressed with what I've seen from Isaiah Jacobs today, the sixth-ranked player in Oklahoma as a high school senior in the Tulsa area, brother Josh now with the Raiders. He's shown some very nice moves and some decent hands as well. Really has, and I know we've talked about it being thin in that room, but the opportunities that these young folks have had during the spring to be able to step up has is, is really been huge, and Jake has really taken advantage of his opportunities today, running it and also catching the ball out of the backfield. And on second down, Amato with the carry and down near the 40-yard line. John Palmato, the guy who's been a standout in the spring as well, jumped up into the eyes of Dan Enos and Michael Loxley with his opportunity to shine. Third and one from the 41, and he twists his way forward. Should have the first down for the red with 153 and counting to play. This is what I talk about, understanding down and distance. Need one yard, sure the clock is moving. But just get the one yard. Don't try to make the big play bouncing the ball outside. Again, as we've talked about, clock rules are sometimes a little flexible when it comes to the spring. Clock would have stopped on the change of on the change of down, but it's not stopping here. And on first down, the incomplete pass. And the clock continues to run on second down and ten. This red team gonna have to hurry it up. Kevin, this is a great situation to be in, to have your football team in, in this type of situation. Normally in spring games, it, the scores get so lopsided, so one team's already out of it, but for it to be coming down to the end with the team, with the red team, with the opportunity to win it, it really keeps both teams on their toes as they continue to prepare. Also puts them in uh, the coaching staffs in, in great situations where they know that they can continue to test their players in different situations. Now the clock has stopped. We don't really have a good handle at this point on what the clock rules are or aren't. That's because I think it's just sort of a flexible situation right now. So it's second down and 10 at the 39 yard line. A little end around in some trouble is Fleming and Fleming is gonna be dropped all the way back at the 48 yard line. That play went nowhere from the start, finishing it off in the backfield was TJ Kautai. Trying to get fancy in two minutes. Trying to run a double reverse. Didn't quite work out. And on third and 23, just a check down. Nothing doing there. The tackle made by Isaiah Hazel. Fourth and long and one last play for the Red. White team is two outstanding plays. Play before this, the double reverse, really staying disciplined, understanding where you need to be, and then coming up with the big play there. Fourth and 22, give me your best play. Air it deep and see what happens. Down the sideline, intercepted. Ball game for the white. Steak dinners for the white as Corey Coley Jr. seals the 12-10 win for the white team. Coley Jr. has made some plays in this game. Again, we talked earlier about those guys that are coming up. Fourth and fifth corners or secondary players. You see him being coached up right there. Go get it at its highest point. Don't let it come down and catch it in your gut. Go up and attack the ball. So coach is continuing, continuing to coach to the very last second. And that is indeed the ball game. It's going to be important to find really their best guys that are out there. And, and Branch can, can play that position as well. He's also the right guard. So they have a lot of guys up front with some position flexibility. But getting the best five out there is going to be critical. And on first down, the toss to Dante Demas, sir. First look at Demas as he makes the catch. That gets the first down. And this offensive line that we're talking about, Howard, 
it's set in certain positions. Jalen Duncan, who was honorable mention all-conference, looks like he's set at left tackle. Mason Lunsford is one of the most improved in the spring, according to Michael Loxley. He's in one of those guard spots. Johari Branch, either center or right guard. Spencer Anderson is likely the starting right tackle in the fall, but there's room behind the starters, and there's room for somebody to step up at the center position going into the fall. As the catch is made by Corey Deitches, he's got a first down for the white team. And that's always going to be critical. You know, I mentioned talking about your, your top five, but you also have to be able to have the guys that you can rotate in there that also can give you some position flexibility that can swing a little bit. But you see them doing a nice job of pulling misdirection plays there, but establishing themselves. And, and that's important in a game like this. Yes, you're playing against some of the same defenders that you, you go against each day in practice, but the reality is as a group, you have to continue to get better. On first down, and the toss to Jarrett. Kim Jarrett trying to find some running room, and that side closed off. Deontay Banks leading the charge. Nick Cross came over from the free safety spot to help close that out. Yeah, Jarrett did an outstanding job of getting the ball out, outside, but one of the things you want to do in those situations is sometimes when a defense has you outflanked, you've got to put that foot in the ground and get north as quickly as possible to be able to gain some more yardage. But I can understand why he wanted to keep it outside and try to make the big play but down a distance, know where you are on the field. Second down and 12. The white team at the 30-yard line of the red. Bailoa, excellent protection, and he finds Dante Demas. Four different receivers on this drive, and Tonga Bailoa has been awfully good on the drive. Perfect, in fact, seven for seven on the drive. Really nice job of diagnosing what's out there. He's getting a little help from the defense because they're playing off coverage because it's a long yarded situation. So they're keeping everything in front of them, not allowing them to get the big play. Third and six at the red 24 yard line. Action, had to get rid of it quickly. Finds Jarrett, and Jarrett from the 24 takes it down near the 17-yard line. Should have the first down for the Terrapins and the white offense. Tongue by Aloha put a great job, and I mean a great job of really dropping the arm and throwing it a different level to get it out there. Had he gone right over the top, that probably would have gotten knocked down, sidearm that ball, and really got it where he needed it to go. It is a first down just inside the 18-yard line. Off play action, floats it over, and that's in and out of the hands. Is that a catch and a fumble? If it is, it's going to be a touchback. Deontay Banks recovers it in the end zone, but it's ruled incomplete in and out of the hands of Brian Cobbs. Got to be able to secure the ball, but that was an outstanding play on defense. Really trying to make a play. You see the footwork once again, the timing is there. Put it away. You get a good job of getting your hand in there and knocking it away. Secure the tackle, come across with your right arm to try to strip the ball. It's a great defensive play. We're very close, Howard, to having our first 2021 catch or no catch <laughs> debate. But it is a spring game. It is. Second down and 10. Tonga Vailoa, after his first incompletion on the drive, going up top for the end zone and overshoots the intended receiver Dante Dimas. Deontay Banks on the coverage. And you talk about Banks, we've seen him a lot on this drive, Howard. And while Michael Loxley was quick to praise young Tarheeb Still, who was really, really good last year, he said one of the reasons Tarheeb Still was so good is because teams didn't want to go after Deontay Banks. And the comment he made was, I've been around a lot of NFL cornerbacks in my career. Banks has the stuff. That's high praise. That is very high praise. And they get an opportunity to compete against an outstanding receiving core. Each and this every time, the practice. completion to Jake Okonkwo. And Okonkwo with the first down, converting on third. And in the, in the pocket, throws him open. Knows exactly where the holes are going to be in the zone scheme and gets the ball where it needs to go. 
On first and goal, Fleet Davis trying to get to the outside, and a good play made in the backfield by Nick Cross. That's secondary showing up here today for the red team. But that play was all established by the defensive line getting up the field. Cross had to secure the tackle, but the disruption in the backfield forced the ball outside, and that's what you need to do from a defensive standpoint. Now, this is one of the areas where this Maryland team is going to continue to grow from a body size standpoint. They've done a great job in the offseason of getting bigger and more physical at the point of attack, and you just saw it there. Second down and goal back at the eight-yard line. And flags fly. So second and goal now back at the 13-yard line. The white team, who was in the red zone earlier, bogged down and had to settle for a field goal, hoping not to have the same fate befall them here. It is just the spring game, but Howard, so many of these spring game moments are all about situational offense and defense that you want to take over into the fall. Yeah, you want to be able to know that you can be a disciplined football team because it doesn't take talent to be disciplined. So you need to be able to sit there and be able to not have unforced errors and, and that was one for the white team right there second goal at the 13 the Bailoa and they just throw that one at the feet of Daryl Jones nobody open third down and goal I think this is where Tonga Bailoa has really elevated his game having an opportunity to have this entire spring film work that was a play that maybe he would have attempted to force last year because you're trying to make plays. Understand that the defense won that one. Let's throw it into the dirt. Let's not put the, put the ball in harm's way. And now you live to play another down. Nine for 12 on the drive. 12 for 17 in the ball game for Talia Tungavailoa. Third down and goal. Good protection this time. Looking for the back corner of the end zone and Demas and nothing there. Tarheeb still on the coverage. And once again, this red defense stiffens inside the 20-yard line. We've seen that happen. We've seen him go for the end zone a couple of times. Banks did an outstanding job of coverage. And now Steele on the other side does an outstanding job in coverage. We talked earlier about not giving up these big plays to these big play wide receivers. And right now, this red defense is truly stepping up and not giving up the big play. Field goal try. Thirty yard attempt for Joseph Petrino. And with no rush, Petrino puts it through and a six-nothing lead for the White with 731 remaining in this first half. Stewart there talking with Ruben Hippolyte, who he had lots of praise for, his sophomore middle linebacker, said he does a great job of commanding the huddle, something he'll want from that youngster as the season goes on. Let's check back downstairs with Crystal. Hey guys, I'm joined by Maryland former running back Jack Funk, who is really excited because the NFL draft is just days away. How are you feeling just ahead of this really big day for you? I'm feeling great. I mean, I, I can't complain at all. I'm, uh, you know, very excited, very blessed, and, you know, very, you know, just waiting for the day. I've been waiting for the day my whole entire life, um, and, you know, just counting down, counting down. Now, at your time at Maryland, you really fought back through two injuries, two ACL injuries. What did you learn through this program about resilience in your own self? Um, I mean, I, I just say life is hard, um, you know, and, that you know you got to take advantage of every opportunity that's given um, and really you know the the biggest thing is just appreciate the day um, being able to you know come in and work and you know appreciate the game because it got taken away from me for two years yeah absolutely as you look at this team as they look forward to the 2021 season how are you feeling <laughs> especially being here not on the field this year I mean it's definitely different I mean I, you know I'm a fan now but you know I'm excited to see what these guys do this season there's a lot of talent on this field um, and, you know our coaching staff is doing a great job at you know putting putting this together and you know building a culture 
um, that's going to change Maryland football. And, I, you know, I'm excited to see what these guys do in the fall. Awesome. So we want to have a little bit of fun with you right yeah. now. You can see the field right yeah. here. I want you to run us through what you're seeing on offense, and particularly the backfield, if possible. Okay. So he's in the pistol right now. They're, they're run. It was a dive play to the right. Isaiah Jacobs going down the sideline. Yes, sir, Zay. Good job. But, um, yeah, but no, he, Isaiah's a great running back. And I'm, I'm excited to see what he does this season, too. You know, um, you're, you're pretty good at this, so we want to have you do it one more time. Okay. Hopefully you I got can it. see this I got okay. It. I got it. All right. Let me see what's going on here. Okay. So, you got two by two formation with Isaiah in the backfield to the right, lined up in the gun. Let me look. You got play action, David Faust to Fleming with a nice cut, nice move, tackle for a couple yard gain. Love it. All right, uh, you know what? We might have to hire you here at the Big Ten Network. Do you want to do one more for us? Yeah, sure. All right, let's, yeah, let's sure. have it. I'll do one more. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Isaiah Jacobs in the backfield, David Faust. At gun, Isaiah Davis or Isaiah Jacobs with the motion of down the middle. Isaiah Jacobs staying on his feet, gaining a couple yards Isaiah after Jacobs contact. Again. Love to see it. Jack, thank you so much. Best of luck as the NFL draft awaits you. Yep. And uh, listen, Kevin and Howard, you might have some competition right here yeah. for your job. We'll try. You know, we'll try. <laughs> I'm sorry, Howard and I left. We went to the break room, <laughs> grabbed some, uh, grabbed some lunch, might catch a movie. Good work on the sidelines. Third down and six. White team up six nothing. Red team at the 40 yard line of the white. Big shoes to fill now. On third down, Faust back to the air and backing his way. Near a first down is Cameron Blunt, and Blunt with the catch and the first down to the 33. If I'm getting an outstanding job, but I didn't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> On first down, nothing doing this time for Fa Matau. Good tackle made by Joseph Bolatapelli, the transfer from NC State. He saw action in four games last year, made one start, had eight tackles for the Terrapins. Didn't see a whole lot of action for the Wolfpack when he was there in 2018, but another guy on that defensive line as they continue to look for depth that has an opportunity to make some plays in the upcoming season. On second and nine, a miscue with the handoff, and Faust fortunate to have him carry it back, have that carry him back to him. One of the things that you have to, has to happen as a running back, you have to be able to make those adjustments. You know, he needs to come back across to try to make a blitz pick up there and was really concerned about getting across. So he may have cut that off just a little bit and was forced to knock the ball out of the quarterback's hands. Third down and 13. clock just about expired they got the snap off in time and Faust incomplete intended for CJ Dupree and that'll bring up fourth down it was another outstanding rush by the defensive front one of the things you're going to see today is you're going to see a four-man and a three-man defensive line and they're they're going to be able to be multiple up front with the personnel that they have of really attacking the quarterback did a great job coming off the edge Tagging the quarterback, giving up the sack there. Kim Jarrett. Back to return this punt. There will be no return, so I'll end the drama of what might happen on this. It'll be a fair catch. No, it will. I promise. Promises, Anthony promises. Pepperella. It will be a fair catch. Yeah, I know. I make a lot of promises, but this one I believe I will be able to keep.
Barella trying to pin this one deep. Didn't get the hop he wanted, but still inside the 10 yard line. Well, Michael Loxley has been kind enough to wear a mic for us today. Let's listen in to the head coach. Out of bounds. Long foul ball. You got to give him a 50-50. Third and 10. Got to score points. Don't, don't be smart. Don't be dumb. Third and 10 and you're in the red zone. Don't take any sacks here. Get points. Let's go. What is this? Get points. The mantra of every... Offensive, defensive, or special teams coach. Figure out a way to get points when you're in the red zone. Opposite of the red zone now. They've got work to do starting deep in their own end after the punt from Pecorella and some good movement in the open field and a first down by Tayon Fleet Davis. Fleet Davis getting the check down. Tongue of having a lot of pressure in his face right there. He's able to check it down to the back. 11 yards on first down. Tonga Vailoa back to the air again and open on the sideline. Out of bounds at the 39-yard line. A pickup of 19 for Dante Dimas. Timing in the pocket. Finding those receivers. Finding the hole in the zone. Very confident. Not overstriding. Puts it right in front of the safety. Right over the corner's head. Vailoa, good protection once more, had the chance to survey the field. The catch made by Daryl Jones. The hurry-up offense implemented. Maryland to work with 1.49 to go and counting in this first half. From the 47-yard line of the red team. Back to the air once more. Open at the 40-yard line and out of bounds. The tight end, Chig Okonkwo, with his second catch. We've seen a couple of different speeds on the football coming coming out from Tonga Vailoa doing an outstanding job of knowing where the pressure's coming from. Throws it there. We go back three, two, uh, two plays before that. He had to lay it up so that the receiver could run underneath it. And then after that play, he had a fastball that he needed to get in there between the zone. So he's shown you that he really has the touch that you need. From a court, from the quarterback position to really be able to deliver the ball in different situations. But again, two minute, got to keep the clock moving, keep his offense moving. On first down. And a whistle. This play is stopped. I believe a timeout was called. Timeout. Spring game rules on timeouts are White. a little more timeout flexible White. than you might get during the fall. So the timeout is used here. The first timeout called by the white team. Tomorrow, catch baseball as Northwestern steps up to the plate to battle Iowa. Coverage starts tomorrow at 5 Eastern on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Good to see some fans back in the seats in College Park. The band is back. The cheerleaders are back. We're inching our way back towards what we hope will be a much more complete return to normal by the fall. But good to have a little of the college atmosphere back in College Park. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles theme bringing us back with 126 to go in this first half. Tonga Vailoa. High toss pulled down by Daryl Jones, the senior from Virginia Beach, Virginia, with the catch. From a defense standpoint. There's a flag down. Flag down, but from a defensive standpoint, we've seen a lot of zone. 
today. Uh, so want to give the quarterbacks opportunities to be able to read that. But defensively, they're coming in and making all the plays, rallying to the football. Spring for the officials, too. On the offense, number 70. The 10 yard penalty for the previous spot will be enforced. The defense has the option to start the clock on the staff. Emilio Moran, right there. That's a good initial stop. But right there, has got to get that left arm down and reset. That was a great rush. First down and 20 now. Back it goes to the red team 43-yard line. Eli Loa in the pocket over the middle. He's got Demas, and Demas with a big gain on first down and 20. Demas, Demas is one of those receivers that, that can make plays all over the field. And a big target like him coming across the middle is good for the offense. 18-yard pickup, now second and two, and that'll be a first down to Fleet Davis at the 19-yard line of the red. Fleet Davis catching the football out of the back out of the backfield is one of his strong suits. He can run the ball, but that was an outstanding catch there, uh, knowing the down and distance. Still two timeouts left for the white team. First down and 10, floating it for the end zone, looking for Demas and incomplete. And a flag down again. Holding on the offense, number 71. 10 yard penalty for the previous pack. Replay, first down. Well, we saw the right tackle, Emilio Moran, a moment ago. This is the left tackle, Jalen Duncan, called for the hold. And one of the things you're going to see with Coach Lockley is he's going to talk about those 50-50 balls. Remember, we had him mic'd up a few plays ago, uh, and he was talking about give the receiver an opportunity to make the play. Yes, there was holding on it, but the end result would have still the ball was going out of bounds. You want to be able to keep it in bounds where that receiver has the opportunity. down and 20 back at the 29 Set it up. Kayon Fleet Davis what a catch one handed grab and out of bounds at the 19 yard line <laughs> wow he catches that turns up field immediately no has a great feel for where the ball is it makes the play they're going to try to move him all over the field this year, and this is an opportunity to see just why he can do that. On second and ten, Tonga Vailoa just in and out of the hands of Rakim Jarrett at the two. But let's go back to the catch by Tayon Floyd Davis one more time. It's worth looking at. It's a Big Ten standout presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Tremendous play. Getting y'all big offensive linemen out there, but wow, the concentration, the feel to pull that in. He had 100 receiving yards in the second Maryland scrimmage a week ago, and you can see he's got some hands <laughs> out of the backfield. Had 181 receiving yards in 2019, but he missed all but one game last year after the suspension for DUI. It's much talked about. He has learned so much from that, has Tayon Fleet Davis and has really refocused and rededicated himself after learning a really tough lesson and some tough love from his head coach, Michael Loxley, who kept him out all but one game from last year. First down and goal. Tonga Vailoa to the end zone, a little too tall, intended for Daryl Jones. The coverage right there from Tarheeb Still. Five seconds to go in the half, second and goal. 
Do you take one shot or do you kick the field goal, Howard? To take a shot. But they're not. No, they're playing for steaks. Yeah. Steak dinner to the winner. <laughs> beans and weenies for the loser. They're saying, let's get a two-score lead here with a field goal. Play clock winding down. They're going to reset that play clock, though. Petrino two for two today. This from 23, and now three for three. And it is a 9-0 lead at the half. 